Hello, welcome to another episode. This is episode three of What Makes This Song Progressive? And today is an example of proto-progressive or prototype progressive. This is the Beatles, A Day in the Life. I'm here with Prog Dog, who is uh, accompanying me in this video. <laughs> so we're going to sort of blow up the song and, and examine it. All from a kind of a layman's point of view, it's not going to be overly technical. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the title would tell you that I was inspired by Rick Beato's series, What Makes a Song Great. Well, what is it that makes a song progressive? Well, it's very subjective and it's debatable as well. So let's just say that it's a personal opinion, some of this, what I'm going to say, and I'd like you to comment below and tell me what your opinions are. Already, one thing that makes this album kind of progressive is the cross-mixing, where you have a song that fades out and rather than have a space between the songs uh, fading out with a fading in of the next song which is to me a, a, a strong element of a lot of progressive rock and let's just start with the guitar it's, a, it's starting on a G note so let's move along now so we got the piano joining in and the bass, of course. Uh, I'll say one thing that really sets the whole tone of this song is uh, John Lennon's vocals. And as you know, he he always asked uh, the engineers to put more effects on his voice. He, his voice sounds almost cosmic. About a lucky man who made the grave. And though the news was rather sad. You've got some shakers going on, maracas, I believe. And I think it was George Harrison who was playing those. Take a look at the Wikipedia page, or I'm sure there's lots of Beatles books out there. So you can delve into this much more in detail if you wish with a fine tooth comb. Also, there's a sort of a conga going on there, or bongo. It's like a duck, duck, doo, duck, duck, doo, just a little. So the song is starting off. I like the piano a little note. But it, it's dreamy, but it's still grounded in some way. It's. I saw the photograph. Another thing is here, there you, there's a little variation on this verse. It moves to an F and an E minor, an E minor seventh again back to the C. This is a verse, and this is the thing about the song as well. There's no quote-unquote chorus. It doesn't have a structure like a verse, uh, a, ver a chorus. There is a, a crazy bridge in this song and then there's a mid middle section. Prague so likes to take uh, sort of a necklace of ideas that work together, that have to work together. There's a flow. There's an intro and a verse so far. No real chorus. And there again, the brilliance of Ringo Starr. Any drummer worth his salt recognizes the immense creative talent of, of uh, Ringo Starr, who's a, a genius a drummer. He serves the song, as they say, to express that in the drums. Boom, 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 you know, boom, boom. There's a boom going on, right? It's a car explosion. So. Now here, so this is where there's some variation here, but it's not a chorus. It's, it's just like a little transient section part. It's a little, a kind of a mini bridge going on. He was house from the Lord. Now, I saw a film. I love the British accents. I saw a film. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Canadian. I probably say things weird that you'd think are funny too. So here we have another verse going on. More brilliant drum work. Okay, so here it is. There's that little uh, piece that sort of bridges into another section. But rather leading into a, another, you know, part of the verse, it's going into a totally different part of the song. I'd love to turn you on. This is that part. 
Now notice here it went from C. And then it stays on E. It stays on E and we're going to hear the crescendo, the famous, you know, avant-garde orchestral kind of thing going on. You know what famous song, uh, being Canadian, uses that back and forth. I'll give you a second to guess. So there is a very famous Rush song, YYZ. It won a Grammy Award for instrumental. The Beatles, many years before, used that unexpected kind of... So we're going into that crescendo now. Now, again, this is very progressive to me. I mean, a lot of progressive music you're going to find has a lot of uh, dynamics in a song. The 80s progressive rock dropped a lot of the dynamics and it became just, you know, for example, uh, Genesis, very poppy, where it's just loud, right? Starts off loud, doo, doo, doo. maybe there's a little quiet section here, a quick one or something, but just basically the whole song, like a lot of the music in the 80s, was all about loudness, in your faceness. Now, I did a, um, a reading of the page from Wikipedia about this song. It's going to be linked here and below in case you want to check it out. Pop is all about pleasing, giving you candy, ear candy, right? Progressive rock is not afraid to make you uncomfortable with odd, odd uh, choices of notes, uh, with odd feelings. It just sort of makes you uncomfortable. Now, nobody's going to tell me you can listen to that and not get a little on edge. This really pushes you onto an edge, onto a ledge. Also hilarious is the fact that even if I play this whole section, just that noisy section, you get a copyright strike. So I just find it kind of weird. So there you go, the 24 bars are uh, up. They had their friend, I think his name was Mel, who was sitting there um, by the piano or something and just counting. And then he set off an alarm clock. I don't know if you're gonna hear it here. Ah. There's the alarm clock. They uh, planned originally to, to remove that, but they thought it fit in perfect because listen to the lyrics. Woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. Now, the beautiful thing about this marriage of musicians and talent and songwriting between Lennon and McCartney, you know, Lennon's more the brooder and Paul is more the peppy, you know, go lucky, uh, happy guy, <laughs> which he still is to this day, I think. And... I noticed I was late. <laughs> this is another thing I love. <laughs> the sort of adding the dramatic sounds. Uh, progressive music, some of it will do that, will incorporate sound effects. There is actually a harmony of the key. If you notice John's song part was on a G, and what are we in now? Let's see. So now we're on E, E major. So we went from G to E major. Should tune this first, let's see here. So they kind of work together, right? The triplets are really nice. Do da da do do da do da da. Now, one thing I'll comment too about the percussion here. Obviously, now things have picked up. It didn't go from a more brooding tune to more brooding. It went into this peppy part where you've got uh, the maracas or shakers are going on. You've got some conga I hear. I think there's some snare going So here we got, what is it? So C, G. Just simple chords, it's a, but they're so powerful in this tune. 
And again, you got John Lennon going in the background. It's his voice is pushed to the back, heavily reverbed and delayed. Sort of like he's back there in a cavern or something, or he's falling down a tunnel. Another wonderful thing about this piece of music is the uh, right now you hear the orchestra is part of it again, and there, it's emphasizing the momentousness of, of something happening. The, the, just this sort of uh, awesomeness, this bigness. <laughs> So that's our uh, our catwalk in from one section to another because we're in a different key. Now we're in G. Neat how they worked that out. I read the news today, oh boy. Also notice in this section now, you've got a matching rhythm going on compared to uh, I woke up. Got out of bed, I dragged a comb. You see, it's almost like they took that whole feel and transferred it into this next section, which was a brooding, quiet part, and but now it's got the whole band with it. It's feel. Now it's not quite as peppy as the part with McC with, with uh, McCartney. His part was the snare is going. Duh, 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 duh. To, to, now it's going. Happiness. Hey, I just thought of that pepper, Sergeant Pepper, Peppy. I love that. There's no synthesizers in this tune, as far as I know, but uh, the piano and the piano is used uh, again very much in progressive rock. Now, if you listen closely, you can hear this guy, I think his name is Mel, if I get it wrong, sorry. But he's saying, seven, eight, nine, he's counting right throughout. There was a bit of cohesiveness. I think the orchestra was sort of uh, echoing Lennon's turn you BC. And then it gets stressful. I mean, imagine listening to this looped for f for a half an hour straight or something. It would turn you into loony. And it just builds and builds and builds and builds. Now, that's not the end. Of course, you know there's that final chord which is 40 seconds of what uh, turns out to be nine pianos. It's three pianos that are tripled up, but it's nine pianos. Lennon's playing one, S Richard Starkey, as in Ringo, is playing the other, and then there's, maybe it was Mel, I don't know, this other lucky guy who got to be a part of music history is playing the E chord. <laughs> If you listen really carefully, you can hear like some noises in the studio, maybe a mouse crawling on the floor or something. I don't know. Just fantastic. And who hasn't listened to that and just felt it? It's so powerful. And if you hear a fan, that's my fan. <laughs> so there you go. Um, the end of the song. It's clearly proto-progressive. If you compare this to the Beatles, I believe their first album was called Please Please Me. And they recorded it in one day. And that's so, it. That's a song. It's a bunch of songs. They don't really... 
They don't really tie in together specifically. Whereas this album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, you've got the first song, and then it, uh, which has sound effects just to begin with. It sounds like it's in, done alive, but it's not. And then it uh, blends into another tune, which is uh, from Sgt. Pepper Band to um, Billy Shears, they call him. It's Ringo singing a song. And there's other songs in the album that have really just spaced out wild sounds on them, like the Mr. Kite. And, and then they have the reprise. So they reprise at the end of side two almost. And then it blends into this song. So to me, it's like a whole concept of an album. It's not... You can't just cut it up in, into singles and, and s distribute it and everyone makes sense of them. Uh, they really, it really felt like a cohesive unit. I can easily see how musicians got inspired by Sgt. Peppers and this sort of opened up doors to them where they're using a studio where they're doing the songwriting, they're in control, they run the engineers, you know, they, they take over the engineering room. It's not like they go in there and just get do what they're told experimented right along with their producer martin uh, george martin think about the, the pink floyd you know uh, and the wall or pink floyd dark side of the moon so anyways that's it thanks for watching if you have a suggestion for another progressive rock or proto-progressive rock song that you want to know what makes the song progressive and uh, you'd like me to put it in this feature it in the series leave your comment below happy to get your comments and that's it from from uh, Proto Prog Dog and Dean, we say spiraling out. Talk to you in the next video.